Welcome back, guys. We are here with the LCK Spring 2020, and we're here for the second matchup of the day in our last week of three. Well, actually, we do have one day of three series uh, next week on Wednesday, but we do have Sandbox up against Hanwha Life here for the second matchup of the day. A couple of teams that are still struggling down towards the bottom of the bracket, trying to avoid relegation at this point. Sandbox and Hanwha Life both coming off of losses, I believe. And we are going to have one of them win today. The question is, who, LS? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think that this matchup, first, I want to know who is playing. Is it going to be Summit in the top lane for Sandbox? But what kind of approach is Hanwha Life going to take? Because I think if they just try to play straight up, there's a chance that they could lose anyway. And if they do have something wonky prepared, I mean, th these are the times to start showing whatever they possibly can because they have some more tough matches coming up in recent weeks. They have Gen G, they have APK, which I think that they're not slated to win against at this current point in time. And they even have Afrika. So these matches are all super important because if you remember the standings, these two teams are neck and neck to avoid the relegation zone. Yeah, they are. And that's our first point of the match here. It's a battle for avoiding relegation. They're both on three game loss streaks. Who will be the first one to stop it tonight? Hama Life used to be the Korean G2. That kind of holds a different meaning after last night. Trying unorthodox drafts. However, they were never able to convert that into a victory. What about Sand against Sandbox? Top laners have to cope with the slump. Summit and Kive both having trouble nowadays, I suppose, but Summit's still better than some of the other options that they do have. And Lahens trying to carry his team. Not very successful so far. Well, top laners have to cope with the slump. Sandbox original ace Summit versus Hanwha Life. Gatekeeper Kube. It's always a Summit favored matchup. Does it not matter really what the, the, the champions could be. I think that Summit is always going to be the heavy favorite. He's been one of the uh, one of the top laners that, much like Nuggery and Keen to an extent, is able to win the reverse mirror or the, the mirrors, as well as he's able to win hard counter matchups, which is really surprising. So, bottom stat: seventy nine point seventy five point nine percent kill participation. As I, I believe that the screen that we have on display right now is actually the remaining matches. Mm -hmm. And it is updated for APK's uh, win in the previous series that we did just have. Sandbox, they played one more game than Hanwha Life and they actually lost it. So, And they also have a much harder schedule in T1, KT, and Damwon compared to mostly bottom of the table teams left available for Hanwha Life. Definitely... It if it feels like Humble Life have a pretty good opportunity here to avoid relegation. It, it actually feels like to me this is the match that Sandbox needs to win. If they don't win this one, I think it's lights out for them, most likely. Griffin obviously has the ability to try to miracle run it and try to win every match, whereas Humble Life, if they lose this one, Sandbox still has a lot of rough matches remaining too. Griffin could pot potentially escape hell. As team stats right here, this is in round two. Win rate with Dragon Soul. That's very hard to achieve. Appa well, apparently it is, apparently, if, uh, if you're sandbox, <laughs> sandbox five and three. The funny thing for Hama Life is that every time they win, they get Dragon Soul. Because they've won four series, and that requires eight wins, and they have eight wins with Dragon Soul. So. That is also an interesting stat. I mean, Hama Life used to be more of like an early mid-game kind of scrappy team, but now it's like they require a Dragon Soul to eventually win. And you can see that the Dragon Soul percentage, they're ninth in the league. They're very down there towards the bottom. But when they do get it, feels pretty good as we do have our update here on the roster. Summit is, in fact, going to be starting here in the top lane. Well, that is good news, Bears, if you are a Sandbox fan as he's finally back. And honestly, you, you do have to wonder why he wasn't here sooner. 
We never really got an answer to that. He did just disappear for a while. And I likened it, I, I recall, on the, the Pog State, as well as on the cast, to when Faker got benched on T1 back in the day. As the lineup for Hanwha Life, we have Vista coming back in the 80 carry roll. Yeah, this is going to be starting here, at least, for their side. And we are going to take a look here at the key players. It is going to be Gorilla up against Lahens. You'll notice that down there at the bottom, the duo proximity. Uh, Gorilla loves to stay next to his 80 carry, whereas Lahens, he is ninth in that percentage. So he is kind of all over the map comparatively, even though he plays a lot of Yumi, which is quite interesting to see. Lahens kind of the independent support that don't need no ADC. And you can see that he's, even so, very much a part of a lot of the kills that his team does pick up as he's second for all supports there. Overall, both supports not really having the most impressive stats outside of that, as you can see down there with their point picks as well. Yeah, as Lahens, he is sort of unpredictable though. You, even though he has the Yumi games, Thresh and Tarek, some of those are very standard in the meta right now. You can never be surprised if he does pull something completely unorthodox out and debut it as, okay, match 71, game one, about to kick off here, Sandbox versus Hanwha Life. Let's see what they're gonna elect to ban away. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a start there. Lahens is certainly known for his Yumi. They do wanna take that away. Do not have Callista for Root here. I think that's also a pretty smart decision out of Hanwha Life. Well, we'll see what else they can end up banning away. Aphilios obviously should be on the agenda to be taken off. As Zoe is going to actually bite the dust instead. Rumble. Now getting banned away by Sandbox. Right now, Hanwha Life, they're probably thinking, well, are they gonna just continue to try to pinch the mid lane pool with maybe an Azir? No, Aphilios is open. And Vista is an Aphilio, he does have an affinity for Aphilios, but Sandbox obviously gonna pick that up right away. Now. I do think Avilios is vulnerable to mages in the bot lane. I think that is where you could find success. However, Senna did make it through the ban pick as well. She's gonna get picked up right away with the trundle. And this is probably gonna be fasting Senna. Yeah, you'd have to imagine that it is still very popular even after the slight nerf on 10.6 that uh, did come in. She is still very highly prioritized here in the LCK. And I suppose they said, we'd rather not have Punch have Jarvan. We can trade Senna for Aphelios, that's fine, but we do not want to have him on that pick. As Tom Kench is going to be locked in here and denied for the Senna Tom Kench lane, at least, as Punch is also looking at the Gragas for the jungle. Well, Tom and Gragas are locked in. Tom, obviously, a little bit interesting, given that you know that you're going up against a fasting Senna lane down in bot. You're, there, there's not any real information as to what you're protecting Aphilios from right now. So it is a bit peculiar to see it come in here. Azir locked in by Tempt. And so maybe they were waiting for Sandbox to try to pick up the Azir, and then they respond with the Lethality Varus in mid lane. Tempt is obviously known for that historically. LeBlanc now is going to be banned away. And Sandbox... I don't even... I, I don't think that they would have to pinch top, but I, I can't think of anything else that you would even try to ban because support is too wide open. There's too many things that go with Senna down in the bot lane. And there's even the ability to pivot Senna into just pure support Senna and pick an actual AD carry. So 
definitely a bit peculiar is the current situation. Jace is going to be banned away by Hanwha Life. Summit's and Jace. Very akin to Khan's Jace, almost, historically. Yeah, they, they don't want to let him get his hands on that one. As they do not want to let Cuve play a tank, it seems. They're going to take away Set, which is something he's played a lot. But then also Orn and the Maokai is going to come in here as Nautilus will be the support for the bot lane for the Senna, who is getting a bunch of extra gold. Well, funnel, funneling your Nautilus any sort of stats with the Fasting Senna, it's always going to get uh, probably some eyebrows being raised at it. As it's, 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 Mine are very raised right now. I, I mean, you know that you're going up against the Tom Kench. You pick the Nautilus. It serves no purpose. It's just a, a comfort pick that Really, there, there's no value with, with what's going on there. Sandbox, they will lock in the Atrox. Not a very big fan of it. However, it's Summit on Atrox, not Lonely. <laughs> Although, maybe we could get something here where Akali would go top lane. But no, Akali going to be picked up in mid here. We did see this earlier on in the week. Cannon coming in as a generic counter to the AA trucks up in top lane and both team compositions are mostly pretty standard I do think that Hanwha Life has a much better team comp but I think that Sandbox is going to win despite the team comp just mostly because of who's on the champions and what is necessary for Hanwha Life's comp to actually edge out Sandbox. Yeah, could uh, could be root on Mr. 200 Years down there in the bottom lane to potentially just uh, pull himself up by the bootstraps and carry this entire thing with a very extremely aggressive front line and a Tom Kench to keep him safe. So I'd be curious to see how he does root. We were talking about hybrid earlier on today. He is like the new Root, whereas Root is on a new team, but also struggling a little bit here is Sandbox. So we'll have to wait and see how he how he does down there up against Vista and Lahens. You would have to imagine that you give him the edge down there. As I did like the Azir pick in the mid lane, Dove, very well known for his Azir. You take it on R3, you ban away a LeBlanc, which is another pick that he has jumped on from time to time. And you try to shut down as many picks as possible. So it kind of funnels them into this Aatrox Akali. We'll see if it works out for Hanwha Life. If they can stop them here oh, as baby. the game has been stopped. <laughs> and you know what that means. You know, I it, Welcome to episode 6.748 of Forbidden Love. <laughs> Forbidden Love is back on the airwaves. <laughs> well, absolutely is going to be a really good episode here. I think that a lot of people are curious about the things that could be going on in this Forbidden Love podcast. We're unsure what the current pause is, though. Well, Dove Zelda's, didn't buy items, so... What did you do during the 10-minute break? Uh, well, you guys heard about my kitten that I picked up recently. I went over and I, I played with the kitten, and it was fun. Okay. She was very cute. All right. Had, had a good time. You missed the chance I, I had to, to name make her up Yumi. For, no, it's, I didn't want to do that. You like, didn't want to do that? I feel like so many people, especially in the league scene, are like, all of my pets are named after champions. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot of them uh, that you can find out there. Uh, I heard even that Avali's dog is named Thresh, which I found quite interesting to hear. So I, I wanted to go with a name that actually fit her personality, and that is why I went with Charlie, because she's very energetic and active. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's that was my reasoning behind it. All right, that's a, a very nice reasoning, Valdez. As 
We do have an uh, we have an update. So apparently Dove is having audio issues. Sound is coming out of only one side of his headset. And he is at his home PC. Apparently it has been solved. We are heading back into the game. I actually wanted to ask you what what you named your WoW characters, but I'll save that for the for the next episode <laughs> of Forbidden Love. Yeah, well, those are those are some fun names. For sure. You guys can look forward to them. And yeah, uh, I'm sure he just unplugged his headset and then replugged it in. Shouldn't be any problem, but wanted to pause just in case. And now it looks like he's doing just fine here in the mid lane, dancing and having a good time. And Akali, I mean, right now in mid here, she does have the Prestige Edition skin. And you can get that too in the store. So that even in victory or defeat, your opponents still leave the game thinking, man, that skin looks good. And then when they try to purchase it, maybe, maybe they won't. Maybe, maybe they, you know, they just remember you. <laughs> they just remember you, the, the first person they saw on the prestige skin. Well... The collective has informed us that apparently you cannot get it. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, that is limited edition. Something. It, yeah. You know, I would really love. It feels like LOL never has truly rare skins anymore. They have like limited time, everyone can get them. But do you know what I'm talking about? Like skins that have either. How would I describe this? Like quests. Like you have to earn it via some sort of special giveaway that yeah. requires you to do stuff. It doesn't feel like there's enough of those anymore. There's a lot of grindy quests. Yeah, all the all the quests, to be very, you know, completely honest about them, I'm I'm not a big fan. They're all just kinda like, you know, uh, uh get this amount of gold. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the pack skins were all really cool. You had yeah. to go to packs to get the skin. Those ones are really cool. They stand out. They're not easily attainable. And that's what makes them so special when you do use them. Is because, no, not everyone could have got them. And that that is the, the interesting thing. Obviously, you can make the argument that not everyone could have got them if they, they weren't playing LOL at the time that the limited edition skin came out. But it's not what I'm getting at. Meanwhile, in this game, let's talk about some of the action or lack thereof. As everyone is really just playing ping pong. There's no heavy trades going on. The lanes are gonna be pretty bland for the most part there shouldn't be any sort of solo kill potential anywhere every lane is extremely safe as i mean punch is coming down he's gonna walk over a ward he is a bit of a sinner regardless of what champ he's on his bot lane doesn't have prior neither does akali and yet he passed towards the right hand side scuttle crab looking for a gank that doesn't even exist in its current state before heading back over now. I think he's going to do his golem camp and then probably recall. This should mean that Haru gets both of the scuttle crabs, utilizing the priority in all of the lanes. Yeah, he's going to do what you were calling for a little bit earlier in our last series, which is go from one scuttle to the other when you have the ability to. And you know exactly where the Gragas is. You know he's not going to be able to challenge you. And so Haru is going to go ahead and do that. Punch is back down here on the bottom side. He's going to scan out the ward. Probably was told by his laners that it should be there. And then go for a back. As Haru is considering... Uh, well, he has spotted out the ward here. I don't know if they're actually going to go for the dive. We'll just clear out the ward for now and try to steal away that Grom that is respawning. We take a look at some of the, the graphics down there in the bottom just for the champion win rates. A lot of champions that these players haven't played too many games of is the main thing that I notice out of that one. And uh, another thing, guys, we didn't talk about it before, the, but the damage per minute numbers that came up there earlier. From both teams, all the 80 carries have from 11th to 15th damage per minute or no it's 10th to 15th and there has been a bunch of you know different 80 carries that have played in the bottom side it listed you know leo zenit uh root is on there we had vista lava and all of the damage per minute numbers were extremely low for both teams and all of their various 80 carry players 
Uh, the AD carries, I mean, they're so integral in the current meta, in competitive especially. They're able to really start shining in the later stages of the game. A lot of team compositions right now, the way that the meta is, there's lots of tanks and BP champs that don't deal a whole lot of damage, but rather offer a whole lot of setup. And when you have champions like Amphilios being a meta mainstay for four months now, Senna, obviously, no stranger. You know who did start to disappear a lot is Misfortune, although we did see her last series. It's not really having the same level of presence in competitive as she used to. Meanwhile, I mean, Haru, or Hanwha Life, Haru over here with Vista, gonna pick up the Infernal Dragon as Bami Cinder picked up on the Nautilus as well as boots, so... Meanwhile, up in top lane, Summit is actually getting out-traded. He is down at a CS deficit. He was pressured slightly early on. But as everything stands right now for Sandbox, things are looking pretty rough. They're, they're, they're down a little bit in the gold department. They're down in Infernal Dragon. Now, the one saving grace would be if Hanwha Life doesn't roll a good third dragon. If Hanwha Life gets Cloud, it buys Sandbox a lot of time for the Aphilios and the Akali to keep trying to come online. Yeah, and we'll see if they can use that time to actually potentially get ahead as well as Tempt is here on this Azir. They also have Senna in their lineup with a bunch of pretty good engage options. So, so far, looking pretty good here for Hanwha Life in this game, as the mid lane has been just shoved in over and over and over again. Punch on the Skragas has not been able to find anything in bot or anywhere, including Scuttle Crabs. He's just kind of been the sad Gragas already. So, still waiting for his influence on the rift here. And Gorilla and Rue, I mean, they're, they're just going blow for blow down in the bot lane. Everyone's just sort of farming it out. Vista, not sure how many souls he does currently have on this Senna down in bot lane. Dove not having the easiest time here in mid. Is constantly getting shoved in, missing some CS as well. About to lose a turret play. We've got a bit of a trade happening down here in bot lane. Helios almost out of fuel on that gun. And uh, we're, we're, you know what? I think it's time to go back to some forbidden love, perhaps, <laughs> as literally nothing is happening. And the thing is, is that Sandbox, as we're nearing the end of the split, no one wants to be the player, Hunter Life as well, that makes a really big mistake and causes a snowball to happen to the point where the team can't come back and win because every single win and loss matters for both of these teams. So perhaps we're in store for very safe reserve play for the majority of the game. The other thing, both of these teams do have subs that they're willing to use. And you don't wanna be the player that ends up getting subbed out because you tried to do something beneficial and then your coaching staff or your teammates maybe don't see it that way and they're like, no, so someone else can come in here. Yeah, and uh, we, we've talked about that before, actually, where players that are not having too much success eventually just try to play very safe, especially, you know, originally pretty aggressive players that, you know, look to make plays. Once things are not going their way, they're just kind of like, well, I lost some confidence. I just want to not be blamed. You know, our team is not doing well. The morale is really low. And so I'm just going to be the one guy that's not you know, that's not messing it up for us. And that, that's not a winning attitude, you know? I purposely made it sound not good, because that, that is not how you win. You need to be proactive. You need to have confidence in your drafts and play around your winning conditions, of course. And that means, uh, you know, being able to take risks when it calls for it, as we do have a teleport out of Lahens. Lahens has teleport, by the yeah. way. On this, on this guy. Could be looking to, you know, with all of this extra gold split push or have some presence on the map with that kind of summoner. They have three teleports to two, so 
little bit of an advantage there, even though they do lose a little bit of effectiveness in the lane. Well, at this point, Sandbox summoning the Rift Herald in, or Hunter Life summoning the Rift Herald in mid lane. Just gonna get it on Dove, and these lanes are honestly really rough setups. Not the end of the world, though, by any means. Obviously, the Aphilios doing a really good job down in the bot lane in the CS department. Not a good look for Vista, though. 2 CS. Hope that he really thinks long and hard <laughs> about his decision-making. Are you memeing now, too? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Two CS. That's uh This needs to go into practice school or something, I'm not, I'm not sure. New to the game question mark? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not not totally sure what's happening here. <laughs> oh man. Good champ. Uh, Ender well, is not in the cast spell. <laughs> oh, you were in sorry. the LCK, not the LEC. I, you know, I forgot where I was for just a moment. Uh, yeah. No, I'm so, not sure how. <laughs> it's 0-0, zero, zero, right? Yesterday, <laughs> it was like one and a half kills a minute I was watching the games. That sounds like fun. Sure. Sure, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It, it is fun. But... Is it correct? Is it the way to play the game? LCK doesn't believe so. And so, uh, yeah. We do sit here. Now, Trundle is going to go for this Ocean Drake. They are going to push it out fast here, this in the end. But you can see that with Punch here, they're potentially looking to make a case to actually fight in here. Teleport's being used from both sides. Akali coming in here as well, but it feels a little bit late. With Cubic uh, coming in, oh, that Aatrox teleport way late. We should have Haru just smiting this down. Now let's see how this fight is going to go. Summit going into that World Ender does get the double knockup with the double flash Cube? in response. Cube kind of left all alone. Doesn't flash away. Didn't get the memo. You know, we were... <laughs> have an audio issues before, but I, I assume that he should have gotten the memo that his team was just getting out of there. But he got caught, and he paid the price for it. So, lots of summoners blown on the side of Hanwha Life, including Cuvee going down, but they do pick up this Ocean Drake with a Mountain Soul to fight. So, the, the weirdest thing here is Punch doesn't end up actually going for the steal. The pillar would block him anyway. Summit comes in with a back backwards teleport, or not backwards, but in the back line. So a lot harder for him to approach on the Atrox. They end up picking up the kill. It actually goes over to Rude. And the fight doesn't end up having a, a very big end result. Sandbox are ahead 300 gold. I mean, that's negligible. Obviously, the stats that the Infernal Dragon is gifting over to Hanwha Life is going to make up for that gold discrepancy in its current state. But definitely a uh, a lot left to be seen inside of this game. Summit might try to cheese Cuvee here on this cannon, who is going Proto Belt first item, which I find so perplexing, given that he was ahead, and the scaling on the side of Hanwha Life is just so much better. There's no reason to go for this item when the early and early mid transition was so stable. Coming out here in this game, Lahens. Does have the Sunfire Cape picked up. Umbral Glaive maybe soon for Vista. And nothing else is really happening. So I think we can talk about Forbidden Love. We keep getting interrupted when we yeah. try to when we try to get into it. Sometimes League of Legends games they just they rudely interrupt us as Yeah, a little bit rude. Valdez, what are you planning to have for dinner tonight? Oh, so um this is kind of funny. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, you were ordering some food, and we were talking on the phone or Discord, and I heard you talking about this jalapeno chicken nugget 22-piece set from Mom's Touch. <laughs> yes, Mother's a very, Touch. A, a, a very popular chicken uh, fast food chain here in Korea. Very good, by the way. Uh... That is what I'm going to get for dinner, in fact. That, you is, have a that mom's is my touch plan. Near you? Uh, it's relatively close. 
I, I can run over to it. Shouldn't be too difficult. And I'm going to eat a lot of chicken nuggets. So you get 22 chicken nuggets for 4 US dollars. <laughs> That's actually fantastic. And the, the food standards, I, I don't know what it is, some kind of like food agency or whatever, they're a little bit stricter here in Korea. So I yes. feel like even the fast food is better quality than what you would get in the States. And so you might hear that. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, Tom Kench does exist. They might look to counter engage, but not actually going to happen. As, oh, that's a really nice pillar. So much poke damage coming down from 10th, but here goes Stub. Trying to get into the back line, goes for it. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Still did have his shroud, so that is why. But the hook is on point, but the cask is gonna save him. A really nice follow-up play from Punch, as he kind of spared the blushes of his mid laner. At the end of the day, though, still a lot more poke damage did go down on the sandbox and on life. They're not going anywhere with no objectives on the map, so they're just gonna go stick around, pick up that turret and get a nice little lead from that play. And so Sandbox right now, they're a bit down in the gold department as it stands. Mountain Dragon coming up in 50 seconds. They didn't invest any summoners though in that fight outside of the heal that was utilized by the Aphilios. And it was really interesting. The timing that he used it lined up with the dawning, or the, the ultimate from Senna at the same exact time. So it looks like Senna actually healed Tom Kench. It was, it was beautiful. Mm. Maybe we'll see it in the replay. 30 seconds until the mountain is coming up. Aatrox probably just going to shove in this top wave and then immediately start moving down towards the mountain as you cannot let Hanwha Life get it. Now, interestingly enough, I don't believe Azir will get to his second core item completion before this fight takes place. So if there is going to be a timing where Sandbox is essentially on even footing and has a good chance to win, it would be right now. Dove is having a little bit of a tango over here with Hanwell Life, and Mountain Dragon, they should just burst it. Summit is over here. Kennen, I'm not, he's not going to be able to find a way in. This is actually really big. So yeah, it doesn't look like Hanwha were ready to take that fight. I mean, if you're going to give it away, then just give it away. Get some other wins elsewhere on the map, but they kind of awkwardly shuffle over and say, hey guys, I think we should do something about this. And then they get there too late and Sandbox just back away, kind of just scooping up that objective for basically no losses on their side. I kind of understand giving away one Mountain Drake if you want to fight over all the other ones and you feel like you need that item yes. timing that you were talking about, but they just didn't do either, which looks really strange. Yeah, definitely a bit peculiar, Hanwha Life, as they were willing to give that up. I believe Akali got three armor and four or five magic resistance off of the pickup, so that's going to be pretty valuable. And if Sandbox can actually continue to get more, it's gonna it's gonna be better and better. You know, Atrox is gonna. You know, if Bertha was thirsty, <laughs> not really quite sure what your response was there to that one, Valve. It's really cruel if you think that she doesn't need a drink. Well, Tempton. Okay, they're going to be supported heavily by this and the Hens, who were rotating over, so they take hard control of the enemy jungle first to save a couple of their members there. And yet again, no kills coming out here. Very low kill game so far. It's one death, one kill here at 19 minutes with three drakes taken. And it, it kind of goes back to what we were saying before, but these teams playing relatively safe. I feel like the only extremely aggressive move was made by Dove in the mid lane. But other than that, it has been... <laughs> Just sitting back, scaling up. And if you're going to do that and you feel like the game is going to go that way, then just draft scaling for game number two. Well, it does look like Safety Belt here with their one kill. And <laughs> Mountain <Safety> Dragon <laughs> are definitely taking it a bit slow here. I didn't quite think of one yet for Hanwha Life, but... We'll, we'll get there. We have a lot of time. Don't yeah, worry. we absolutely <laughs> do. <laughs> no, no problem. Kive gets hit by all three Qs and says, please help me. Brother Tempt. And Tempt says, I'm going home. 
Cuvee joins him. Well. Yes, continue. Valdez, what what are your what are your characters' names in the MMO that you do play? And so yeah, playing a bit of World of Warcraft. Me and uh, you guys may have heard of it. Uh, what about uh, Atlas? Playing together. Also, Atlas is on the same server. Okay. With us, we're all in the same guild. We're playing together. It's a lot of fun. All right. And uh, my name is, of course, Dried Banana, which uh, is an ID that I have held for quite a while. I I remember I made it on Steam when I was playing Counter Strike with Tasteless and Wolf and like a bunch of other casters that were out here. Just like spur of the moment. Um, Dried Banana did come out. And uh, I have another character. His name is Boppin' Boy. Because he, he bops on all the nerds. He's a warrior, of course. <laughs> I I don't think I ever swipe left faster in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm not really sure what kind of a profile... <laughs> You were just trying to sell me, but... <laughs> That's my WoW profile. It's... Yeah, really it's wowed me. I, I, I got all the best names. Oh, man. Why, what's, what's your name? What's your ID name? Mr. Uh, Prime. What? I, my current Smurf ID that I am leveling up on the Korean server is named Bernie Sanders. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> How is that not taken from you, Sanders? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Korean server makes some sense. You've had a lot of different IDs. Yeah, you never yeah. Went, you I, never I, went I have Twitch Mr. Prime. Prime, though. I never went with Mr. Prime. I have Twitch Prime. I have Bernie Sanders. Um, other IDs I've had. Uh, what was that guy from had, that show? I had Dragonite. No. I had Walter White. <laughs> Not Pokemon. The 13 I'm, Reasons Why? There Wasn't there some oh, I had, I had Bryce, Bryce Walker, right? Yeah, I had Bryce Walker, yeah. <laughs> and then Max Waldo had Hannah Baker. Yeah. When you guys were doing, I remember Mordekaiser Shen in the bottom lane. Yeah. Lots of fun. Good time. Before, Good time. before the rework on Mordekaiser. Oh, I also had Ben Shapiro. Oh, that's... On the Korean server. Lovely. Now, Sandbox, well, okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Getting in there, Gorilla realizes quickly that he's out of position, has to flash into the pit, and that's what you gotta do. You know, it just don't worry about it, just go for the flash, because if he dies there, it is so much worse. We have seen players try to hold on to their flash in positions like that. Just don't do it. And here it comes, Dub looking for a flank. Oh, that's a great flank. Haru took a, a barrel to the face. Yeah, and, and Mountain is actually sort of helping. Hanwell Life, they have to be really worried. They know about the Akali. There's no exhaust for her. Here we go. Smite Whoa. is going to go the way of Sandbox. And they're all going to back away. And this is another very big victory for Sandbox. You have Atrox. He's building the Death Stance. Merc Treads on the Akali. You're going to have either the Zanya's Hourglass or the Banshee's Veil eventually on the Gragas, most likely the Zanyas, but all these stat amplifications do really help. Senna, also going to be influenced by this a lot. It is the fasting Senna, and so doesn't quite get to all those lethality items as fast, and when you have a wet noodle tank like Nautilus, who doesn't have any penetration of the sorts, it's going to be really hard for him to deal damage. So Sandbox really being bailed out here by these dragons. Imagine these were cloud dragons. It wouldn't do, it would do virtually nothing, in fact. But yeah. the mountain is really powerful against Hanwha life because it makes it more and more all about the Azir show. Yeah, and for both of these teams, neither of them, even Roots, neither of them have had like one pop-off player. I suppose Summit has been that player from time to time but seemingly has lost a little bit of confidence as their team has been slowly going down in rankings. But as you mentioned, if it turns into a one-man show, it's different from having someone like Faker or BDD onto his ear. It's, uh, it's a player that doesn't have as much experience in kind of 1v9ing as some of our you know top-tier players have. So although I think that 10th is a very talented player, 
I, I still have questions about whether he can carry this team by himself. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure uh, either. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, oh, oh, oh. speaking of which, this is the caster blessing. <laughs> not the cast of curse this time around. I was questioning it, and I was proven correct as Root just shot him in the face. <laughs> he heard he heard Brendan Bronze Five Valdez, and he said, "You know what? I'll show you Bronze Five. Kept <laughs> <laughs> uh, showing us that, that his Zir suit is indeed made out of bronze. As uh... oh man. And, uh, you know, you can't just feed kills over to the Aphelios because then this is going to happen. A great cast. One of the directions goes straight into the team. The other one goes straight into Summit. Summit, unfortunately, not able to do his job and finish the job onto the Trundle. But either way, just like that, it feels like the tension is totally broken. And yeah, Sandbox I'm have opened this game wide open. Sandbox, I mean, they don't have a super massive gold advantage. It's only 2,000. But... They're doing a really good job at slowly just getting ahead. And, you know, you, you take a look at this game, and let's take a look at the replay here. So, some people might say Bronze 5 doesn't even exist anymore. I say, look no further. As Temp, he just steps right up with the Sand Soldier. <laughs> I got a zero, I got a zero, I got a zero. Uh, go slow, go slow, go slow. And the really, the really nice thing here is that Sandbox is a team that is known for playing so slow, or not slow. They're, they're known for playing so fast and reckless and actually throwing away all of their leads. So it's really nice that coming out here in this round two match, Safety Belt versus happily losing everything <laughs> is really just giving it to us here in the opening match of this series. I don't think there is a better name like that. It's actually perfect. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it took me a little bit, but I got Probably there. losing everything. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fitting. It's fitting here. Uh, they got a couple of objectives, and then they just started to happily lose everything. Um, Azir lost his life there in the mid lane. They lost a bunch of dragons that went the way of Sandbox. And now Summit, okay. Well, this is unfair, five versus one. Dove, I think you should probably turn around as, uh, okay, well, they are gonna have some help Whoa. finally coming in and actually Summit gets away. Dove is not gonna be able to say the same about himself. Root will be devoured, but he is frontlining big time. He is flashing into the fight. And now everybody on Hanwha is just going to give up and run away with their tail between their legs. Once they saw Big Daddy Aphelios flashing in, they knew who was the boss of the Rift. And that means that Sandbox, just like that, are going to take the fight win and move over to take the mountain. Green. They come over to the mountain, and like what you were saying, it looked like this was going to be a one-on-five. And Summit barely manages to end up escaping. Dub goes in, gives his life. Over gets knocked out of the crowd. He's not able to do anything. And Aphelios, it, I mean, he comes in here, and you just take a look at all the. I mean, it looks like 200 parsecs coming out here, <laughs> <laughs> showing happily losing everything. Just what's going on? Oh, <laughs> oh man. 14, they lost another fight as well. Uh, it's it's hard when you're going up against that 200 guy. He's got he's got a lot of tools in his kit that nobody seems to understand. He's light years ahead of everybody else on the rift. <laughs> up 200. <laughs> 200 light years. Oh, uh, he's he's uh, he's having a fun time. Oh, like Take a look at his total gold. Take a look at that. I like how Gorilla devoured him in the team fight, and then he spits himself right back out. He's like, no, you don't <laughs> <Yeah>. understand. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> Gorilla, you didn't see the patch notes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Only Aphelios understands his technology. Nobody else gets it. Nobody else on the Rift. He's the only one. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm Hanwa, I don't... 
I don't really, I mean, they're trying to set up the big time flank. And maybe if they get root here, okay, they're going to force the devour and then go for the fight. But Cube is going to be spotted early. And just dove on here by Dove Ooh. as immediately Gorilla is going to go down. I'm not sure that it matters, though. Affilio is still available. Oh, Tempt! A huge play! Unbelievable Tempt by himself is going to carry his team. And they are not going to lose this one thing as... Oh, well, I may have spoke uh, too Summit, soon. The raid boss. Summit is massive, but I think 1v4 might be a little bit too much to ask. As, oh uh, okay, he is unbelievably strong, but it does not matter. Stopwatch is stronger than everything in this world of League of Legends. As Hanma Life will move on, and Tempt, I think he may have just earned himself the player of the game if they win, just like that. And so Tempt with a absolutely miracle stream of shuffle. Now, the scary thing, though, is they... Both of these teams expended a lot of summoners in this team fight. So, the next Mountain Dragon fight, it's for the Mountain Soul. And take a look at how long Hanra Life actually takes to do this, by the way, without yeah. Azir. <laughs> and Sandbox, they come in, Punch is just going to clear out the vision. But the other key thing about this team fight is Azir's weapon, or not Azir, Aphilios' weapons in this team fight. Pay attention to what ends up happening. Cube actually locks up Dub. He couldn't get back into the fight. Gorilla goes down super early. Punch. I mean, his cast was just not good. And then Temp with a absolutely miracle Sharima shuffle. Summit brings down the Azir. Couldn't quite get in. As the Senna was able to snare him up. And this was it. This was the raid boss. You ever try to take down Ragnaros? It probably looks something like this. As this is just ridiculous how long he lives. <laughs> it's just incredible. Uh, he doesn't end up taking anyone with him, but you can see he did the most damage in the fight. But that fight was not about damage. That was about temps and what Azir can do. Because if Aphelios has room and he doesn't get pushed straight into the middle of the fight uh, with Calibum Crescendum, he is going to have a pretty fun time and wouldn't have been much that Sandbox could do, but just like that, the game is flipped on its head. I mean, they're just gonna push down mid with the Baron, just not pulling any punches. They're not gonna try to split or anything. They are just going straight in here, trying to burst down Summit. He's not going to get his Guardian Angel off, but they do wanna get this inhibitor first, and then probably back away with still a minute 20 left on the Baron buff and see what other objectives they can get on the map here with Mountain Drake spawning in 30 seconds. Mountain Drake spawning in 30 is really scary. Oh no, Sandbox, they might walk face first into a trap. Never mind, Haru. Yeah, Haru is gonna start it off here. Summit was in the back line. Let's see what Temp can do this time around. Thomas Kench, the first one to go down, and there we go again! Pulls the Aphelios right into the middle of the fight, but this time Summit is way too big. It doesn't matter that Aphelios is dead because Dove and Summit are able to do it alone. They are too fed and this will is... be able to win the fight. Honestly, in it's Arthas Menethil here <laughs> on Atrox <laughs> because, oh my. It really looks like that was just gonna be a repeat. It looks like Hanwha Life were just gonna win yet again. But the tankiness of all of these champions amplified by now a four Mountain Drake, Mountain Soul. Take a look at how long Tom ends up living. Take a look at Summit as well on this Atrox. He hits all the sweet spots. The Sharima Shuffle comes out. Aphelios did nothing in this team fight, but yeah. just look at the Atrox wrecking havoc all over Hanwha Life. And you can see the Dub goes over the wall, Haru flashes away, knew that Summit would be able to clean it up. And even though Vista did end up managing to get away, I think that's gonna be all that she wrote in this game. Mountain Soul, 24% amplified resistance. As Akali's going is Anya's Hourglass next. Just take a look at Akali's resistances right now. 134 armor, 109 magic resistance. She's a tank. Yeah, she's a real tank for sure. And she's got, you know, a decent amount of health on top of it. So it's not like it's just resistances or anything like that. Has that Morella Namicon. 
which uh, will add a little bit and there. So I, one of the things is, if you look at all of the resistances on all the champions in the game, I mean, even look at Aphelios 146. You know, Valdez, this isn't a one-for-all mode, but I am seeing five orbs on the side of Sandbox. Yeah, I mean, they're all just, they're all just beefcakes, you know? Nothing is going to bring them down at this point. Uh, especially, I mean, we were already seeing fights dominated by the tankiness of Sandbox, and now they just they just got Mountain Soul, so it's going to get even more difficult. And I think, no doubt, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of Shurima Shuffle you get, no matter what Emperor's Divide you get, unless you can somehow play the map, which is what they're trying to do with the Azir in the top lane, I think that's Hama Life's only uh, oh. you know, chance here, as we do have the fight down here. They are gonna continue on. Oh, Sandbox. I think they might try to just backdoor. Yeah, they're going We've for seen it. Look at Vista. So many games like this. Vista and Cube and Lahens all chasing them down, and here we go. The turret's in the way. They have to try to stop the backs at any chance here. The Nautilus is trying to back, but look at the base. We have the teleport coming in from Hanwha Life as well. And as I mentioned, this is the only way they would be able to win this game. And they have pulled it off somehow, some way. 36 minutes. Hanwha Life able to get in there with the back door. I just witnessed a uh, the grand larceny, I guess, is what just happened here as DB wow. Cooper managed to, uh, I think that, I think we've located him. He's on Hanwha Life. <laughs> Azir and Trundle managing to CLG2 sandbox here in the first game. Well, actually, I guess, I guess not quite, but I'm not on the last part, but <laughs> almost, almost. Yeah, I mean, that was, it, it, it just looks like it was over once they got the Dragon Soul. And then, <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, okay, just like that. And you just, you have to be so careful when you're pushing against that. You have to take it really seriously, especially for where they were on the map. I mean, already the tier two turret was just disappearing. They have an Azir Trundle. who are going to be able to catch people like it's nobody business. You can't just leave one person to stop that back door. You have to send at least one more person back to set up a 2v2 and then try to push 3v3 rather than just letting it happen and say, oh, it should take care of itself, and then losing the game. That should have been an unlosable position, but they just got outplayed on the map. Well, at this point, Sandbox, they fought so valiantly throughout the mid and late stages of the game. They brought it back, they got the Mountain Soul, and then they just haphazardly rushed up mid for no reason really impatient and that's why they need to fasten their safety bell well, because otherwise stuff like this will end up happening the highlights of the game honestly summit had an mvp performance on the atrox but they ended up losing so manuel life stealing away the game number one via the back door they probably can't feel so comfortable about this, though, because they were giving up everything in the mid to late stages of the game. They were losing control, and if it wasn't for Temp having a couple of Miracle Shurima Shuffles, they would have just lost this game as well. So you can't feel good if you're on real life proceeding into game number two. And Sandbox, though, they are a very, very tilty team. So are they yeah. going to tilt now? And is Summit going to play number two? It, you know? I mean, I, I would imagine that he has I would to. imagine so, but, you know, based on some of the decisions that we've seen, I can't say it with 100% certainty that he will be playing. Uh, you know, obviously he was, like, kind of the one guy that was holding it together. Him and Root were kind of leading the charge. And, yeah, I mean, this was all Tempt. Like, we wouldn't have even gotten to that backdoor position unless Tempt had pulled off uh, what he did in two team fights in a row. So if he doesn't get player of the game, I would be extremely surprised and sad for him. And yeah, I'm a life. They, they pull off the unbelievable steal of a game. Like this is not a comeback or anything like that. This is a game they were supposed to lose. And then just a, a tricky 
decision. And they were like, okay, let's just try it. They go for it, and it worked out perfectly. Well, going into game number two, we'll see if the draft changes up. I don't think the draft, by any means, was a problem for Hanwha Life. If we take a look at this, and I don't even know what Dub is trying to do. It's not like he would be able to kill the cannon. He's never assassinating Azir there, by any means. Teleport coming in by the Nautilus. Summit slowed down by the pillar. The Abyssal Voyage from Thomas Kench. It's really surprising that he doesn't actually use... I, I, I guess he's just so focused. Okay, actually, he does finally use the mini-map or F keys to look. Uh, just keep focusing. It's over, it's over. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, oh, I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, you could, it, yeah, as you were saying, LS, they shouldn't feel great after that win. And there were no screams of joy or, you know, relief or anything like that. It was kind of like sighs and just like, oh, man, we didn't deserve to win that, but we did, like, at least. Thankfully, we were able to somehow pull that off. It's it's not the greatest feel, no doubt, on the side of Hanwha Life. But at least, you know, a win is a win, and they get ahead here in the series. And I think next time you want to ban Aphelios, well, they'll be on blue. So maybe they can just first pick it for their own AD carry. As was kind of the Summit and Root show. I didn't really notice Dove much at all. He only had like 6,000 damage. He really wasn't able to do much no, that was, on the Akali. I think the worst Akali performance that we've had in the LCK. So hopefully we don't see that again. It came in at a really weird timing. Let's see what Sandbox can do to try to bounce back in game number two when we come back. Yeah, so guys, we are gonna take a five minute break. We will be back for game two.